pride. Hey everybody! So, yeah, um, I went to Pride this past weekend, and I gotta say, it was pretty fucking cool. I actually wound up going to two different events. Um, on Saturday, Rachel and I took the baby to um, Pride Night at the Lakewood Blue Claws. I have to say, it was special being able to just go to a baseball game with my family and enjoy myself, but at the same time being recognized and appreciated for who I am. So Blue Claws, keep it up. And then on Sunday I went to Philly Pride, and it was something else. Unfortunately Rachel and the baby couldn't come with me, but I met up with some friends and I rode into the city and it was... All in all, it was a great day. Now, because, ostensibly, this video series is about me losing weight, let's just discuss for a second how much exercising I wound up doing over the weekend. First of all, at that baseball game, I carried the baby around for about like an hour. Because, you know, she's a toddler with no attention span, so yes, we're going to wander around a baseball stadium. But also, she's a toddler, so I can't just let her wander around by herself. So essentially, I spent about two innings just carrying around a 30 pound weight, and that's a decent workout. But then on Sunday, oh Sunday. So I met up with a friend in New Jersey. We took the speed line into Philadelphia. We got off on 8th and Market. Then we proceeded to walk down Market Street to 3rd and Market. Met up with another friend, watched the entirety of the parade, which was fabulous. And then escorted the second friend down to Penn's Landing to the festival, which we did not have uh, wristbands for. So the first friend and I, seeing that there was a gigantic line, uh, wound up not going in. Then we walked a block down Penn's Landing Road to Chestnut Street, all the time looking for one of her friends who we didn't find in line. Then we walked up Chestnut Street, um, saw a very interesting protest. So then we walked back up Chestnut Street to around where the Liberty Bell is. Then we got a call from her friend who we were looking for, who was in line. So we walked back down to Penn's Landing. And when we got down there, we all collectively decided that maybe the festival wasn't worth it. So then we wound up walking back down Chestnut Street, up 2nd Street, down Market Street to Stowe's Bar, got something to eat. And then, um, at that point, uh, I was exhausted and it was time to go. So I walked back down to 8th and Market, got back on the train, rode back to New Jersey, and then proceeded to drive across the state about an hour and a half to get home. It was a long day. I was tired. But for somebody who is part of the LGBT community, it's a rare opportunity to completely feel comfortable like that. I was explaining to Rachel that I think the only other time since I came out that I felt 100% safe was when we went to the Trans Wellness Conference last year. And that's not even to say that outside of the convention center I felt perfectly safe, but inside the walls it was good. But this was really the first time just walking around a city that I really had no, that I really had no fear that somebody was, was gonna mess with me. And that's not to say that I didn't have fears before I got there, but once I saw the number of people that were going and the number of people that were there, I really felt that at any point, if anybody tried anything, uh, there were at least a dozen people within a hundred feet who would come back me up. And I guess to an extent, that's part of what Pride is about, that's what 
some extent Stonewall was about. Um, being together and backing each other up. And while I was there, I couldn't help but reflect on the fact that while this is the 50th anniversary of Stonewall, there's just so much work left to be done. And every single day, there is some other news story where somebody runs afoul of some bigots, somebody gets hurt, somebody dies, some new piece of horrific legislation is being passed, some other arbitrary discriminatory ruling is going into place. And in the face of that, thousands and thousands of people just at this one parade were dancing. And never in my life have I been at a more joyful event than this past weekend. Never have I been somewhere where so many people were just happy to be together and free to be themselves. And it's just absolutely extraordinary that this is a thing that exists. I, I mentioned to my friend on the way into Philly while we were on the train that in the one train car that we were on, just that one car alone on this one train, there were probably more people there on that one car than were at Stonewall. And the entire train was full of people going to the parade. And the streets were lined with thousands upon thousands of people going to the parade. And there were hundreds, thousands of parades around the world. And when you recognize that, suddenly you don't feel so alone. It doesn't feel as if what you're going through is so out of the ordinary or strange. Because it's not. It's normal. And there are millions of people around the world going through a similar experience to what I am, to what I'm sure many of you are, and and part of the reason I'm doing this series, and hopefully when I actually go to get my surgery, I'll be able to do a series about that as its own thing. Um, and why I do these videos at all have this channel is because I understand what that feeling of loneliness is. And when I was trying to figure myself out, there were so many videos that I watched with people just talking into a camera, trying to explain their lives and their experiences, whether they thought it was going to help someone or if it just made them feel better to talk. I don't know. Maybe it's both. I know for me, it's a little bit of both. To be perfectly honest, where I live is not the most liberal place in the world, certainly not in New Jersey. And there are definitely other LGBT people around, but not that I necessarily see every day, not that I necessarily interact with. And to some extent, me sitting here talking into this camera and talking to you, I'm pretty isolated. But no matter where I am, no matter where any of you are, it was nice to be reminded this past weekend that no matter the distances, no matter what is going on in all of our lives, we're not alone. I'm not alone, and neither are you. And 50 years ago, most people were not on our side. 
most people looked down on us, hated us, thought we were disgusting, thought we were crazy. And some of those people are still around. And sometimes it's very hard to see the progress that has been made. But 50 years, whether you realize it or not, is a long time. And despite the fact that there are those who want to put us back in the closet to pretend that we don't exist to make us just go away. Ultimately, there are a lot more people with us now than not. And I know that right now is a scary time. And I'm sure that a lot of you are scared. Some days I'm scared too. But look at all that we have achieved in 50 years. Just imagine what 50 years from now will be like. So, happy Pride everybody. Keep celebrating. Keep dancing. Keep fighting. You're not alone. And we're all in this together. So enjoy yourselves. Be safe. Have a drink. And I'll see you around.